2 Samuel chapter 4. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, that would be Ishmanesh. Now, remember, Abner was his military commander. He was trusting all the military strength. Everything on protection was put on Abner. He's dead. They fought early in chapter 3, which brought Abner to, you know what, we're going to go to David. We're going to give it all up and put it under David's authority. And even Ishmanish, like, okay. Well, now Abner's dead. Ishmanish is left unprotected. His hands were feeble. He's scared. And all the Israelites were troubled. What's David going to do? And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands. So just two groups of military leaders with their leaders. The name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimna, a Berithite, of the children of Benjamin, that's Saul, for Berith also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Berithites fled to Gedami, Gedam, Gedam, and were sojourners there unto this day. Another note. And Jonathan, Saul's son, another son of, we know about Jonathan, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the times came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. They're dead. And the nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she hasted, as she made haste to flee. That he fell and became lame. And his name was Mithibosheth. So we're introduced to Mithibosheth. We're told that when his father and his grandfather died in battle. He's five years old. The family's about to flee. They're on the run. And this child is picked up and dropped by the nurse. And the sons of Rimna, the Berethite. Becca and Benna went and came about the heat of the day, afternoon, to the house of Ishmael, who laid on a bed at noon. This was the custom. This is the hottest day of the year, and the Mexicans call it siesta. When it's the hottest day of the year, we're just going to lay down, we're just going to rest, and we'll pick up business back when it starts getting cooler. No sense of being out in the hot, hot, hot sun. Remember, we're in a desert climate. And they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat. So evidently, in the king's house, they would come in and come out. Uh, we need some wheat. Okay, it's over there. Supplies. I'm well, assuming that the house was not locked. And they smote him, the third time mentioned, under the fifth rib. Again, with the ribs are numbered, that's by the heart. So you got Asenio, you got Abner, and you got Ishpanish. Three men that have been killed under the rib. And a lot of people say that fifth rib would probably be in the rib that Adam gave up for Eve. Right next to the heart. And Rechab and Ben and his brother escaped. So they go into the bedroom and they slay this guy who's asleep. And when they came into the house, he laid on his bed in his bedchamber. Bed we call it a bedroom. Chamber. It's a room. And they smote him and slew him and beheaded him and took his head and got them away through the plain all night. So they killed the guy in his bed, make sure he's dead, and they chop off his head. Looks like they leave the body there. And they brought the head of Ishmael unto David to Hebron. And said to the king, David, Behold, the head of Ishmael, the son of Saul, thine enemy. And nowhere does it ever say that Ishmael was David's enemy. He had his kingdom by Abner. David had his kingdom with Joab. And never said David was angry. Never said anything, David treated him as an enemy, which sought thy life. 
That's a lie. Only hostilities we saw is when they're by the pool and they begin war games. And the Lord has avenged my Lord, the king this day of Saul, and of the seed. No, you did it. We'll see that in a moment. And David answered Rechard and Benaiah, his brother, the sons of Rimmon of the Barathite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, there is an oath, who has redeemed my soul out of all adversity. The first time that word shows up. Giving God the credit. God's been taking care of him all this time. That absurdity is Saul. You mentioned Saul. The Lord's taking care of me. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead. This is chapter 1. Thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in, Z in Ziglag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. Look at that. We learned something. And then Amalekite came in. He said, David, I slew him. I killed him. And he was telling a story. And he was saying that before the fact is, you know what? I'm going to get a reward. Now, notice David said, I have slain him. I slew him. Chapter 1 verse 15. Chapter 1 verse 15. And we talked about this the other night. This is Romans 13. And David called one of the men, young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. The young man. David said, I slew him. I gave the order. So Abner and Joab give the order. Let the men go play war games. Now this is not saying David's wrong. But David is acknowledging Romans 13. I gave that order for that man to be slain. Why? Because he testified out of his own mouth. Oh I killed Saul. But he didn't do it. But he said it. And the fact is when we look at Joab and Abner. It's the only way we would say that David did not charge Joab because there was no witnesses. Where was the witness of the Amalekite? He spoke out of his own mouth. Who had thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings? These guys are kind of dead. See his head? Oh, you'll be nice and happy. He's your enemy. Look what we did for you, King. How much more... When wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed. You two are wicked. Ishbanish is right. That's interesting. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 19 15. David had a run in like this. 1 Samuel 19 15. This brought back memories. 1 Samuel 19.15 And they come in to, to Michael and said, Give us David. Oh, he's sick. He's not feeling well. He's in bed. He's gone. That's where he is. In verse 15, Saul sent messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. So what would that act of being called over here by David? You're wicked. David, Saul was wicked. David was righteous. You don't kill a man on his bed. That's a whim. Give the guy a chance to fight. You're cowards. Just as much as Joab was a coward with Abner, cut, caught him off guard and slew him. Well, these men are like, we thought we did right and they done wrong. In his own house, upon his bed, <laughs> shall I not therefore now require his blood your murderers of your hand and take you away from the earth. I'm going to get you. I'm going to kill you. Because you killed an innocent man. Because when you look back over here in chapter 3, verse 14, and David sent messages to Ishmael, his son, 
saying, Deliver me, deliver me my wife Michael, which I espoused to me for a hundred foreskins of the Philistine. And Ishbanis sent and took her from her. So Ishbanis is working under the authority of David. There is no rebellion. And Abner's probably, hey, go get Israel, and let's all go under David. And David commanded his young man, Romans 13, 3, and they slew them, the two men, and did more, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. Amazing how that pool keeps showing up. It's not a place where, you know, you go swimming and this is to say you know what people you see those guys up there you try to do this with, with that Illumicite and what these two men do you, you try to get rid of my enemies that you think are my enemies that are not my enemies you're going to end up in the same position they are dead and hanging but they took the head of Ishbodesh and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron and doesn't say anything else what happened to his body. So where Abner is buried in chapter 3, the head of Ishbanish is buried with Abner. Uh, look at it. Look at four chapters. Death, 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 death. Man, David is just having a hard time. But you know, since David has been now king, he knows death is happening. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, death is going to happen. From his mouth, that sword. 